Welcome to Access to Employee Exposure and Medical Records Training. If you are an employee who has possible or potential exposures to toxic substances or harmful physical agents in your workplace, or if you are an employer who has employees that may be exposed, you need to know your rights and responsibilities under the OSHA standards entitled Access to Employee Exposure and Medical Records. Ultimately, at CED, our employees' safety and well-being is our main priority, as well as staying compliant. With that being said, we feel it's extremely important to educate you on this topic. Under OSHA's standard, you have the right to access relevant exposure and medical records if you are a current or former employee who is or may have been exposed to toxic substances or harmful physical agents, an employee who was assigned or transferred to work involving toxic substances or harmful physical agents, the legal representative of a deceased or legally incapacitated employee who was or may have been exposed to toxic substances or harmful physical agents, or lastly, a designated employee representative to whom an employee has given written authorization to exercise the right of access. The standard covers records documenting the amount of employee exposure ranging anywhere from toxic substances and harmful physical agents, metals and dusts such as lead, cadmium, and silica, biological agents such as bacteria, viruses, and fungi, and even physical stresses such as noise, heat, cold, vibration, repetitive motion, and ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. An employer must authorize employees and, in other circumstances, their designated representatives to access exposure and medical records relevant to the employee, which, according to OSHA.gov, must be free of charge and within a reasonable period of time. Furthermore, employees or representatives may have access to these records in various ways, such as being given a physical copy of the document, provided the proper resources to copy the document, or given the document to copy off-site. Under no circumstances should an entitled employee or representative be denied this potentially life-altering information. In regards to the type of records that can be accessed, there are various kinds, such as exposure and medical records. Exposure records include records such as monitoring results or measurements through workplace sampling, biological monitoring results, such as from blood and urine tests, and safety data sheets, which may indicate specified materials that may pose a threat to human health. Medical records include documentation of the employee's medical history, such as from medical and employment questionnaires, test results, first aid records, and employee complaints, to name a few. Overall, it is important to note that whenever access is requested to any type of analysis, personal identifiers must be removed. Furthermore, if your employer doesn't have exposure records available to provide you with, your employer must provide you with records of other employees with similar duties or working conditions and exposure records for duties, tasks, or jobs that you are being transferred to. Remember, personal identifiers must be removed whether they be direct, like the name, address, or social security, or indirect, the exact age, height, sex, job title, etc. The ultimate responsibility of employers include preserving and maintaining medical and exposure records for each employee, informing workers of the existence, location, and availability of these records, informing employees of this OSHA standard, making records available to employees, their potential representatives, and to OSHA, and, apart from maintaining records during an employee's employment, making sure employee records are maintained for at least 30 years after employment. Moreover, if a company goes out of business, it is in their best interest to follow additional rules regarding record preservation and disposal. Employers are not required to provide physical specimens such as blood and urine samples, health insurance claims or records, records created only for use in litigation that are privileged from discovery, records created as part of voluntary employee assistance programs such as records for alcohol and drug abuse or personal counseling, and trade secret information. You may ask yourself, I know my rights and what I'm able to request but how can I actually access these records? 
Personal exposure assessments or monitoring results, for example, the results of wearing a dosimeter, will be distributed to you via a confidential written copy, which will also be placed in your HR file. If you want access to general exposure assessments or monitoring results, they may be posted or communicated verbally, or are available through our HSE team. In terms of personal medical records for workplace exposures, these are available through HR and are kept confidential. Now that we have discussed OSHA's standard regarding access to employee exposure and medical records, you should know that you have the right to access workplace exposure records and personal records if needed. You know how and what you can access, and you know your employer's responsibilities. Remember, while working in most industries, exposure to hazardous materials is always a real possibility, and the impacts on your health can be serious and life-altering. Ultimately, you may need accurate detailed information about any exposure to make informed decisions regarding your health and safety. Please let CED's HSE team or HR department know if you have any inquiries regarding this standard or if you may need access to your medical records. Thank you.